most of Uganda's innovators have been discovered by universities. Local inventions like apps tend to remain prototypes or student projects. And because the ideas aren't nurtured much further than concept stage, many fizzle out on lab shelves. Those technologies that will definitely require like clinical trials. They have a proof of concepts, you can see the case, but before it starts going into a commercialization, you need to invest significant resources into research and development to validate the need, to validate the technology capability. Another challenge is funding. Previously, innovation has fallen under the broader umbrella of the Education and Sports Ministries. Scientists have long campaigned for an independent department, something they believe will provide more focused support. A ministry is a capacitator of projects like those. So there is now a fund, there is a, there is a, there is a budget for the ministry, but also the, the president has put in, I think, 800 billion shillings fund to help those innovators. Experts have welcomed the decision. However, some say Uganda has a long way to go before it catches up with the rest of the world. Environments like the, the Asian countries or the US where you have what you'd call patient capital. So somebody is willing to put in money and you try, fail, try, fail, until you fail no man finds something else to do. Mm. If you don't have that then these guys really struggle. As the economy is agriculture based, scientists have been encouraged to focus on improving the sector's productivity. There are fewer career scientists in Uganda compared to other qualified professionals due to lack of involvement in the sector. For those who have qualified, the irregular job market has forced many scientists to look for work outside the country or opt for a career change. Uganda is hoping its new science ministry will encourage young innovators to stay put and help build the economy. Hilara Yesiga, CCTV, Kampala.